What's up YouTube and welcome back to the Accu Audio Garage. Today we're back with that TSX. We're gonna be talking about the amplifier replacement. So if you're looking to replace your amplifier, your amplifier is dead. You can get a used one from the junkyard or here are your RCA connections. The TSX factory radio, whether you have navigation or regular radio, only outputs four channels of output, all the wires to every speaker and they're all labeled. So you have front, we're gonna talk about some options that we're thinking about developing. So here we have some amps on the table. And of course, here's our 05 TSX. This is gonna be the same from 05 to 08. Uh, I'm just gonna catch myself before I continue. Just make sure you like the video, subscribe. Always, you know, take some time to develop this content for you guys. So I just appreciate it if you like the video and subscribe. So digging into the car, we're gonna go over the disassembly procedure on how to get to the amp. And then we're also going to talk about the different amp options. I have a little camera here. This is I was test fitting that camera works on the TSX and it does. Um, but yeah, back to the amps. So we have a couple of options that we're considering. We have the four channel amp, um, we have an eight channel amp, and then we have a five channel amp. Also looking at a six channel amp, it just hasn't come in yet, but those are kind of the options we want to explore. So here's our factory amp, has these two connections, mounts with these two bolts, and that's really it. You need a part number, there you go. So we've managed to create the necessary harnesses to replace your amp. So if you're looking to replace the amp in your TSX, here are the two plugs that you will need. This is the audio source from the radio, factory radio. And this is the connections to every speaker. As you can see, they're labeled rear right, front left, etc. You could also connect a line out converter here because you do have ground, uh, constant power, and a remote wire. Um, so it'd be helpful if you're gonna run like an active line out converter like an LC, 6i, etc. Uh, you can grab your power straight from here. But let's dive into kind of the architecture of the TSX and then we'll go over the amp options that we're thinking about. All right, first we're just gonna talk about component location and uh, the pinout of the amp. So component location, you have your amplifier, which is right in the center dash. Here, let me get you guys closer. So as you can see, there's the amplifier and then you it refers to your two rear speakers. So it has two six by nines in the rears. Here they appear to be six and a halfs, but they are six by nines and these sort of function as your subwoofers. Then you have the rest of your audio system. So you have your two tweeters in the front, your two door speakers, your two um, rear door speakers, and then this also displays your antenna. So it's a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight separate drivers. Thus why we were looking at the eight channel amp if you want to go fully active, um, no passive crossovers, the eight channel amp would make sense. The four channel amp, um, we were thinking of going your components um, bridge together and your rear and deck speakers bridge together. So the total, the front two channels would power your front two speakers along with your tweeters and the rear two channels would power the two rear speakers and the two rear deck speakers. And that would be the four channel amp. Then we were also uh, looking at the possibility of a five channel amp where you would have a component set in the front, coaxials in the back, and then you would actually tie both of these together to act as a subwoofer. The only thing is there are no six by nine subwoofers. So you would have to use six by nines to six and a half adapters or cut them to eight inch or make them work with a six by nine speaker that can play low um, end sound. But again, these are all kind of what we're thinking, the experiments that we're trying to decide. So if you take some time to just think about what option would make the most sense for your, and just leave that down in the comments. We've gotten from the few people we spoke to that they'd rather have all the speakers in the vehicle act as speakers and then run their own aftermarket subwoofers in the rear. Um, other people have said, no, I wanna keep those two rear speakers as subs because they don't want to lose any trunk space. So with a six channel or eight channel amp, you'd have the option to do either or because you could select the low pass or high pass filters for the speakers. 
on your four channel, you're gonna have to be running all of them as speakers. And then on your five channel, you'd have to treat the rears like subs. So kind of some decisions to be made here, but I wanna go a little bit deeper into the TSX and what is what exactly we're talking about. So next part is the pinout of the connectors we were talking about. So here are the two connectors. And if for whatever reason, you can't get your hands on these, you don't wanna buy them, etc. Here's kind of the pinouts. So if you decide to cut these and do this on your own, see that the bigger connector here on the right um, has all your speakers and they're labeled below. And then your connector here on the left has all your audio signal and a bunch of shields. Then lastly, the last thing I wanna show to you, it's just the overall wiring diagram. And this is just in case you had any questions uh, regarding the layout. So as you can see, each speaker has their own set of wires ran to the amplifier. So your tweeters don't branch off of your um, door speakers. They actually run straight back to the amp. And then your audio unit, which is the radio, sends four channels of audio out to the amp um, so that you have what is here, front left, front right, rear right, rear left. On other vehicles, such as the Acura, the actual head unit outputs the six channels. On the TSX, the little amplifier takes care of all those crossovers and sending the right signal to the right speaker. In terms of amp replacements, on the TSX, a plug and play amp is gonna be nearly impossible because of the wire gauge available to you. I said none of the amps were gonna be plug and play, that's wrong. The four channel amp is gonna be plug and play. We have been testing it in this vehicle, uh, powering all the drivers. It sounds really good. Gauge available to you. So this is probably right around 18 gauge wire, 16 gauge maybe, uh, power wire. And that's not gonna be enough to power even the four channel. So any of the options that you see here are gonna have to be individually grounded and you're gonna have to run a power wire to the battery. So all your speaker connections will be taken care of and I'll show you what that will look like in a second, but you will still be left with a power wire, approximately 10 feet, that you would have to run from the amplifier through the engine bay to the battery and also secure an inline fuse, and then a separate three foot, two feet ground wire that you would need to secure to proper metal to ensure that you have proper ground. What we're gonna cover in this video now is the removal of the factory amp, and then we're gonna test our amp bypass kind of so you can see how it would work. And then we're actually gonna hook up this four channel and see how that sounds compared to the factory amplifier. All right guys, so to get to the factory amplifier is actually not too bad, it's just a couple of panels. You're gonna need a Phillips screwdriver, a panel removal tool, and then a screwdriver thin enough to fit into this hole. So what you're gonna do is, you're first gonna start by, uh, this was missing, but your shift uh, release has a little tab here, so you're just gonna pop that out, and then you're gonna insert your screwdriver, press the button down, that allow you to shift this down, like so. Once you're able to shift that down, you're going to now stick your pry tool in between these and pull on this, while pulling this back. That will allow you to free this panel. It will come straight out towards you. And it just has these tabs on the bottom here that are holding it and then tabs here on the top. So it's just a panel you're gonna have to pull off. Just be careful as you're pulling. Then what you wanna do is you're going to take this up And this is also held in by pressure. So you're just going to release all the pressure points and then you'll have the ability to pull this up. You're going to disconnect the two buttons. So the button here and the button there and all they connect with are these. These have a little tab here on the side and that'll allow you to pull this off. Again, here's the other one, one's blue, one's gray. Little button for you to press down and pull off. Then you have four screws you have to deal with. So I don't have good lighting here, but there's a screw here, 
there's a screw here then there's a screw back here and another screw back here and those four screws are all that's holding this panel in I'm gonna pull this panel towards you what's gonna stop you is there is a connector back here for the uh, cigarette lighter and then also a tab to hold the connector close to a cigarette lighter so that's going to be these three connections um, which are going to be the cigarette lighter connection the tab I was telling you about and it looks like there's a light here um, this wasn't connected when we took it out so I'm not sure exactly where it goes I don't see a spot for it here oh I see a spot for it uh, on the other panel so customer actually took this light off uh, to run his wiring he has a Bluetooth module in here but I see where that light goes and this just has two clips on the side and you should be able to pull it off or push it through the top um, then finally we get to our amplifier so let me get some light and I'll show you exactly where the amp is so here are two screws again one right there one sorry multiple right there and then you have two back there here let me shine the light right there and then right there so here's our factory amp it's actually held in by two 10 millimeter bolts one on the left one on the right for what we're doing we don't need to necessarily unbolt our amp we're just going to reach back here and disconnect our wiring harnesses there's more than enough room for you to not unbolt the amp and just disconnect these so now that i have them disconnected i'm going to hook up our amp bypass and just kind of show you how it would work all right guys so once the amp is out you disconnected it remember you don't need to unmount it unless you need that space down there um here are your connections so i'm gonna see yeah you can't see um that's a little better all right so here are your rta connections the tsx factory radio whether you have navigation or regular radio only outputs four channels of output to the factory amp so you have your front right front left rear left rear right and then here's your connection to every single speaker so it's all labeled so you do have a ground and a constant and an amp turn on here so if you want to run a line out converter or dsp in this location you definitely could you have the uh, wires necessary to do so and then here are all the wires to every speaker and they're all labeled so you have front left front right you have the front right tweeter front left tweeter rear left speaker rear left door speaker rear right speaker rear right door speaker so everything's labeled and color coded to the standard colors so it makes installing your own amp real easy what i'm going to do for you right now is i'm just going to take some output play some pink noise to the factory radio and then show you what the line levels look like coming out of the factory radio okay, so before my ipad died what i was trying to show you is i'm playing pink noise through my phone through a gta car kits bluetooth adapter for the tsx and here's the output signal so the signal coming from our amp bypass to the rta here's a voltage at max volume so we're at volume 40 and here is my voltage you may think that's not enough to run the aftermarket amps but the plug and play amp sounds fine with this input voltage and then i'm going to show you the rta side so here's the rta and what i want to show you is that, it, that it is a full output signal but it is eq'd a bit so you do have some bass roll off there again i'm playing pink noise so every frequency should be steady but we do have some fluctuations this is just to give you some awareness of kind of what kind of signal you're working with from the factory radio so if you want to correct this you might use a dsp uh, to kind of flatline your signal or boost the signals or maybe or maybe you'll use the epicenter to up that bass. So this is the front speakers. I'm going to change to the rears now. So you could see the rears are very similar. It's just a matter of like fader. That's really what they're for. But the output is extremely similar to the fronts. So if you really are doing subs, I do recommend an LC2I or some kind of bass booster to lift up that bottom end. Okay, so I have our test bench set up with our most common setup that I feel the average uh, DIY wire is going to run here. We have our ground wire power wire and our remote wire So our ground wire make sure keep it as short as you possibly can it goes straight to the metal of the car solid metal uh, With the paint scraped off scraped off you have your power wire 
uh, you're gonna run this to the battery. Make sure you put a fuse in between the battery and your running power wire, close as close to the battery as possible. And then you have your remote wire. Your remote wire is coming inside this speed wire and it is just a solid blue wire and it runs inside the speed wire and then gets connected to this plug. So here's a plug with all the speaker connections. It also has your amp turn on. Uh, it's a blue wire, it's labeled AC and amp. Then your amp is now powering on and off when it's supposed to. Here goes your audio signal. You plug this into your car. Now you have your rear audio and your front audio from the factory radio. You can see they go through RCAs and then they plug to the back of the amp. They plug into the back of the amp or wherever you're plugging yours in. Now you have some decisions to make. So your amp, uh, we're gonna assume is a four channel, um, is gonna have four outputs for audio in total. Um, it's eight terminals, but it's one channel, two channel, three channel, four channel. And that's what you have here. You have four pairs of wire, a pair of greens, a pair of whites, a pair of purples, a pair of greens. Here you have much more wire than that. So here you have approximately eight channels that you need to deal with. So you can combine all your grays and all your whites, which will, that will do is combine your front door speaker with the front tweeter and the uh, passenger door speaker with the uh, passenger tweeter. Basically, you, the tweeter on the left with the speaker on the left, tweeter on the right with the speaker on the right, and then you can also do the same for your rear speaker. So your rear door speakers, if you switch out the six by nines in the trunk or in the rear deck, you can then treat them as regular speakers and you can combine all your greens and all your purples and basically run four channels like that. So you'll go four, two gray wires to one pair of gray wires. And I know it seems confusing and the reason is because this amp doesn't have enough channels but here you're gonna have to make the decisions on how you want to hook this up you could just go four for four so you could do front left front right rear left rear right which means you'll leave a bunch of these wires not used or you can come up with some sort of solution uh, that makes them all work like I mentioned you can put all the grays together all the whites together all the grays with the black stripe together all the whites with the gray stripe together and then just run them to the white and black and the gray and black and the same for the purples. Here is your decisions to be made on how many channels are gonna work, how many speakers in the car are gonna work. If you wanna eliminate this because you're not sure, you're like, I'm not really sure how to hook this all up, then this is where our amps are gonna come in. So we're gonna have that eight channel version that's gonna have every output to every car, I mean to every speaker, and we're gonna have a four channel version which is gonna basically combine your fronts and your rears to make kind of like a four speaker system but with eight speakers. So, so it's gonna come with this harness, this is gonna plug into the factory connector, then these two connections are gonna plug into these two connections here, and then your audio output, you're gonna get this harness and it's gonna plug into the side here, and then obviously the amp's gonna be tuned for you, etc. So I'm just gonna plug it in and then I'll just play it for you guys. Here it is all plugged in. Here's your speaker connections, primary wire, and then here's the source. As, as a general rule, every double, true double of power is about 3 dB of volume. So when you perceive something twice as loud, you usually wanna go about 6 dB or 8 dB than what you're listening to, and that to a person's perception is usually twice as loud. So what that breaks down to is the factory system is probably 10 watts, 20 watts, when you go to 40 watts, it's not double as loud, it's 3 dB louder. So you'll notice a difference, but it's not gonna be twice as loud. To get to twice as loud to that 8 dB mark, 9 dB mark, you're gonna go three times the power. So from 20 to 40, then from 40 to 80, and from 80 to 160 for you to feel like it got twice as loud. I mean that to say that this amp is louder than the factory amp, um, but it's not twice as loud. It's 3 dB louder. So it, you're gonna hear it, you're gonna notice it, but I'm, I've set proper expectations where you, if you expect it to be twice as loud, you're gonna need a big amp. And that's where that six channel or the eight channel we're looking at will come into play. Right now I'm gonna play the four channel and you'll see it does sound good. It does get louder, more bass. Um, but I just want to set the expectation correctly. I don't want someone to think they're gonna buy this plug and play amp and it's gonna be like, you know, a music and a music, a concert in their car.
base is a lot fuller so you get that lower end base like i want to say like 40 60 hertz compared to the factory system where it's probably rolling off around 60 hertz and you're not really hearing that low end bass so here you are getting that low end bass so i highly recommend this amp if your amp's not working you're just looking for a decent upgrade if you really want to shake the block you want to be loud then this isn't what is going to be for you all right guys that's going to be it for the video um we covered the amp bypass i showed you kind of the traditional hookup the only choice you really have to make from the traditional hookup is what speakers you're gonna hook up or not hook up or how you're gonna bridge them, not bridge them. And that gets very tricky, very complicated if you don't know what you're doing. If you're a beginner and you really don't know like how bridging works or power to bridging and the how the impedance drops down when you go parallel versus series, um, you wanna be careful when you use this. Use the product carefully. I don't want you to damage your product or damage your speakers because you weren't sure how you were hooking it up. You have access to every single driver so you can get really creative how you want to hook everything up. And it's not a standard system because you end up having the six speakers and then the two tweeters. So just beware. Um, be careful how you hook it up. Ultimately is what I'm saying. I'm, I'm gonna be done repeating myself. We're gonna do a dedicated video on the plug and play amps. Right now we're getting ready to wire this guy up and then uh, we'll be showing that on video. We also have some research going into the factory radio and how to replace that i know there's like a aliexpress tablet the tl has one tsx has one as well and from what i've heard it's all right i mean it has the same bugs like every other radio but if you're like a traditional guy you want your standard doubled in there is a dash kit um metro makes it uh, but it looks kind of funky we're, we're exploring options there and then also we have a video on how to install just a regular sub amp and a sub in the tsx we're in the process of writing that now there's a couple pieces we missed from filming the video because we had to do it so quick so just make sure you stay tuned make sure you subscribe make sure you like the video we're always coming out with new products for for your acura and always new content for your acura so just make sure you're subscribed and always thanks for watching i really appreciate it